Before I share my testimony this afternoon, um, I would like to ask the Lord's presence to be with us. Let's bow our heads. Dear Heavenly Father, we thank you for another day of life. Uh, we thank you for protecting us. We thank you for your love and care, and we thank you. I thank you for this opportunity to be able to share my testimony um, with my brothers and sisters in Christ, Father. I pray that you would speak for me, uh, that your words may uh, touch someone's life here today and uh, change the way they think about you for the better. In Christ's name I pray, amen. Amen. So as most, if not all of you guys know, my name is Patrick Albert. I was born in Los Angeles County. I wasn't born in the best of neighborhoods. Um, in fact, I remember sitting at my window um, very, very often. I would sit at my window and watch the gangsters shoot each other outside um, like I was watching TV. Um, so in that sense, my environment wasn't that great. But the environment inside my home was a very spiritual environment. I was born and raised uh, Seventh-day Adventist. My, both my parents were Adventists. And I remember knowing that God's presence was there with me. I remember that I, there was this one instance where, th there was many instances like this when I was growing up, but there was this one specific in instance that I remember where my dad had locked his keys inside of our house and we were already late for school. Um, and we, th all the windows were locked, both doors were locked, the screen door and the main door were locked. And we tried everything we could to get into the house, but we could not. I remember grabbing a saw for, I don't know why I grabbed the saw, maybe I thought I could saw down the door, but that didn't work, nothing worked. And so finally, as a last resort, unfortunately, we got down on our knees and prayed. And miraculously, when we got up to try the doors, both doors opened. And that's just one of the many instances I, I remember um, growing up, proving God's existence in my life. So I knew he was there. I had, I had a general knowledge um, of the Bible stories, the famous Bible stories. And I had the faith of a child growing up. Um, but when we moved to Orange County, everything started to go downhill. I attended public school from grades three through six, and you guys know how peer pressure works. I became influenced. Um, I started to follow the crowd. I turned into a punk rocker. I started listening to the music. I started dressing like them, and I started to learn to cuss here and there. I wasn't that big of a cusser. I, didn't, I actually didn't like cussing. I just did it because everybody else did it. And uh, I don't know if this is possible or not, but I believe I grew up to be I was like a natural video gamer, I guess. I just I just gravitated toward video games. You know how people have their have their little um, the, the the things that they struggle with most in their lives. Uh, some people struggle with music. Some people struggle with movies. Just a whole bunch of different things that Satan uses. Mine was video games. Um, I I just recently just got over it. In fact, and um, my grandma practically forced my parents to buy. Uh, me a PlayStation 1 when it first came out, and that didn't help at all. In fact, I became more of a video gamer. Um, and then, after I graduated from the 6th grade, because my school only went to 6th grade, I went to 7th grade at an Adventist school, and it's, it's, it's almost absurd how our Adventist schools these days are worse, or if not the same as our public schools. Um, and once again, peer pressure took its course, and I gradually shifted from punk rocker to gangster because punk rockers were looked down at um, or frowned upon at, at my new school. Here I learned to be perverted, I learned to cuss even more, I got into fights, like we would have tournaments in our locker room, um, like fist fights. Um, I started to listen to like rap and hip hop. I, uh, it, it was just really bad. And everybody had this game called Diablo. Uh, the game, the, the, the name explains itself. Uh, it's a bad game, don't play it. In fact, don't play any video game. Just that, that game was, it was really bad. Everything about it was demonic. And uh, everyone played it online. And so I would play it as well. I remember, and, and, and all throughout this time, my addiction to video games grew even more and more. And it got so bad to the point where, where my parents would lock my video games inside their room. 
um, closed all the windows, like pretty much closed off any entrance to their room because their computer was in there with the internet and my video games were in there. So I wasn't able to do anything. And um, my, if I wasn't able to play my video games, it got, my attitude got really, really bad. And my parents saw this and they saw that I needed to change for the better. So they sent me to Weimar Academy. <coughs> Praise the Lord. Uh, the academy, God used the academy to change my life 180 degrees around. Um, when I first got there, Mr. Cosman can probably attest to this. He was a, a teacher there. I wasn't the best of students. Uh, I was, in fact, a horrible student. Um, I remember doing the same things I did uh, before I came to Weimar. But, so pretty much the only thing that changed between um, the time that I left my old school to the time I came here was, or the first year I was here, was my head knowledge of God. I had a ton of head knowledge of God that year uh, through, through the teachers, but I still didn't have a relationship with Him. Unfortunately, wasn't emphasized as much to have a relationship and a devotional life with God. So I had a whole bunch of head knowledge. I just didn't have a relationship with Him. Um, so I went back in the summer. I still continued to play video games. I still continued to listen to bad music. Um, I still continued to cuss. And but junior year, I came back. Surprisingly, I came back. I wanted to come back, um, even though I uh, originally didn't want to. I just wanted to do my year and leave and go back to my old school. But God brought me back to Weimar Academy, and this is when really think, when things really started to change because God placed the responsibility of, responsibility of being head RA um, on me, and. The, it started to change because I realized that everything I did influenced the people around me for either the better or the worse. And so, if I did something bad, it could very well mess them up for eternity. And so, I, my language died down tremendously. I stopped listening to bad music. And I had a small devotional life because it was more emphasized that year. But I, still, I was still too stubborn to sur completely surrender all to God. So I came back in the summer battling with my um, conscience as to whether or not to play video games, I ended up playing anyway. And I came back senior year, um, and I did pretty well that year spiritually. I was, God was really working in my life, but the one thing I did not realize was that I was still holding on to some, some, some sins. I didn't even know what they were. I just, I thought I had gotten rid of video games, but in reality, in this past summer, I fell if I felt bad, I guess you could say, it was, it was, it was bad. I went back to my old habits that I, the old habits that I had before I came to the academy. And um, so it's just that there's one lesson you guys can take out of this. And it's that even if you think you've surrendered everything else, if there's one sin that you continually cherish, it will pull you down. Um, and so that's one thing I learned over the summer. Uh, I learned also that surrender is not a once-in-a-lifetime thing. It's something that you have to do every day, every morning, before you get up out of bed, because the devil, the devil even attacks you in, his, in, in your dreams, believe it or not. Um, and so my life story pretty much is God is still working in my life. I'm obviously not perfect, and I'm learning to have faith in the one who's able to the one who began the work is able to finish it. And um, he's still teaching me, he still values me enough to try me in the fire. And so pretty much the summary of my life is that I love God because he first loved me.